Well, we're looking at the globe and um, basically um, one of the ideas is with Eodesson is that we focused it initially on national parks, but as a result of the um, EOS we've been and the facilities there, we've been able to apply it um, for any location in the world and there's still a lot of refinement that can be done with the, with the uh, technique, but it's been very well developed over, over the last um, year. So basically Eodesson is a complex and it's an expandable system. Uh, which means you can keep on building on it so it's it's not something that's going to go away and it generates land cover and land cover change maps based on the food and agricultural organization land cover classification system um, what i'm going to show you now is is some um, demonstration of that and as i say it was originally developed for these national parks but um, one of the things that we um, tried to access was the the sentinel 2 which is the satellite data from the copernicus uh, program and to try and access that archive directly and produce EADS and using that data without actually having to download it. So the classification and the change maps are generated that way. The VLAB is a technology that implements um, an orchestrator for automating the configuration, coordination, and management of the online accessible systems. And uh, it's, uh, it's very, um, in the following demonstration, I'm going to show the potential of EADS and the virtual lab to address some of the issues that are relevant to sustainable development goals, for example, looking at impacts on climate and you know, how forests can be used. And we've got examples of impacts of bushfires in Australia's forests and Hurricane Dorian on the Bahamas. And I'll also show you how um, commercial harvesting of forests can be monitored using EADS to support sustainable use using an example from the Matang uh, Mangrove Forest Reserve in Peninsula, Malaysia. Um, but first of all, we'll show you how um, EADESIN works. And Mattia um, Santoro is going to drive the demonstration. So um, there we go. So basically, the first thing we can do is, is uh, we go to the website and we select our region. And we originally, I say, we've looked at uh, mountains. Uh, for example, and we have a choice there of the, the national parks that have been predefined, um, like Grand Paradiso. This is where I originally focused our studies in eco potential. So we choose Grand Paradiso National Park. We select the model, and you can choose your region of interest as well. Um, the model is Iadessa. Um, and you then select the date and we're going to select the 1st of May 2018 and you choose the image from the archive and we have a nice, we found a nice clear image here. And then we do um, the second date, which is the 1st of May in 2019 and again select the image. So you've got two images and you're going to be classifying each of those and then looking at the change between those. So you can review the, um, you select the platform. Uh, you, these are the area of interest. You select the platform, this is the EOSP. And then you can then run um, the model. So we've got this model. It takes a while, as with the other model that you saw um, previously. Um, so we're going to go back through the history of what we've done before. So what we'll do is we go to Grand Paradiso. And this experiment shows the result of what we are running currently. The main uh, land cover in this particular type is water, which appears as blue because it's, it's, it's actually snow, but it's classified as water in the FAO. Um, as you go into more detail, you actually put it into water in a, in a later, more detailed version of this. And the classification um, says so based on the FAO land cover classification system, and there's eight classes which are mapped. And you can see natural water and basically that snow. And there's eight classes there. And uh, forest and herbaceous vegetation not separated. So you're not separating out forest in, in this particular legend, but that can be done at a later stage as well. Now, the legend zero and legend one show you then the uh, land cover. Um, the legend for the two land cover classifications for period one and period two. And then there's another legend, which is for associated with result two, which shows you then the change. So in effect, you have eight level um, three categories, um, the eight we talked about before, and we can basically compare them over time. So um, each of these are associated with a range of um, drivers like climate, economic, and associated pressures, like demand for land or, or, or increase in temperature. 
and impacts on the environment. For example, if we have a change from natural terrestrial vegetation to bare or sparsely vegetated surfaces, this can be associated with a loss of impact, loss of vegetation, which is the impact, but the pressure is, say, deforestation. But each of those squares actually represents a, a, a major change in the, um, in the land cover, whereas on the diagonal, actually, it, it represents um, no change in the land cover, but internally you could have a change, say, the canopy cover, the canopy height, and so on. So basically, that, that change approach is very consistent and aligns with a lot of the political frameworks um, related to the SDGs as well. So beyond the national parks, we're taking you now to the Australian bushfires, and these were large and severe in, in early 2020. And so we'll give you another example here um, in the history section, which goes to the Australian bushfires uh, in New South Wales. And they caused extensive damage to many forests in Australia and unprecedented loss of biodiversity. And, and the rainforest areas were particularly badly affected. Um, a lot of the forests like eucalyptus are, are um, you know, they can adapt, they're adapted to fire, but the rainforest is not. And so a lot of those were destroyed. So between the 15th and 11th of February, you can see now this big change from the green of the result one to the, the, um, the complete uh, loss of forest in results, I'm sorry, in result one. And it was basically saying it's converted, a lot of that's converted to um, uh, sparse or no vegetation. And the result two is the change, which is your eight category change. So if we go to results two, and that shows the extent of bushfires. And I was actually visited there in, uh, March and the, that is the tr <laughs> a very good representation of how massive that burn has been. But what we can also do is see, you know, we saw a lot of recovery um, from these trunks, the tree trunks, they sort of tend to grow up from the tree trunks. So we can look at what is called the recovery now. So we've taken the image on the, the latter date, which is the 24th of February, which was the, the, just after the fire. And we just looked on the 9th of May, which is like, you know, about a week ago. And you can see now that it's actually coming back. The cover is starting to restore and you're starting to get some hope now into that area where, you know, we could see that in the field and it's, it's really nice to see. It's not all coming back. Some will take decades, but at least it's going greener. Uh, the next example is um, hurricane damage in the Bahamas. And there's an interesting hurricane coming up now. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a storm in the, um, which is now um, hitting uh, Bangladesh and so on. Um, we can look at that storm, uh, maybe in a couple of days' time, and see what the damage was. So this is what we did with um, Hurricane um, Dorian in the Bahamas. So on September the 20, um, 6th of September 2019, uh, a lot of the Bahamas was devastated. So we look at the Bahamas before with our land cover classification, and then we look at it afterwards, and you can see that there's obviously a big change in the land cover, and then the results, which is the change. And you, can, um, and you can see the legend there, that's number two, results number two. Um, that shows that there's extensive flooding and there's damage to the vegetation in the urban areas. So there's been a lot of flooding in there and that actually aligns very nicely with NASA's assessment of where the flooding was. But we've actually also captured more than just the flooding, we've captured the change in the vegetation. The 64 change categories are captured um, through that. The, um, we can also um, look at then at what's happening in the recovery of those areas. I believe we have an example in the history of the um, Bahamas recovery. We just picked that up again, you know, a couple of a week ago. And you can see now it's still pretty sparsely vegetated all there, but there's actually more vegetation coming back. There's, there's a recovery of those areas. So what we can do is, is we can choose anywhere in the world, anywhere in Europe or you know, India or whatever, we can choose it. We're providing a basic classification at the minute, but we'll talk later on about how it can be advanced. Um, but that's the, that's the big thing. We've gone away, we can support the national parks, we can support anywhere globally potentially with this. And we're making significant advances in the higher level classification with this, which we also want, want to run through as well. The third example um, is, what should be the fourth, because it's about the mangroves in Matang. Um, basically, the mangrove uh, forest reserve in Matang has been in commercial operation about 100 years. So it's one of the oldest um, commercial forests in the world. And we've been doing quite an extensive project there um, involving the virtual lab and, and showing the Malaysian people how it works as well. And we can see how um, they log on a 30-year cycle and we can see the logging coops. So 
we'll be zooming in in a minute, you'll actually be able to see the individual logging coops. So they, they have the forest, they cut it down for charcoal, which interestingly goes to Japan a lot of it, uh, but also for poles, for construction and so on. And you can see now that these, these coops are appearing in the mangroves um, and they regenerate, they take about 30 years to regenerate, then they clear them again. So this, this system allows the, the forest managers to say, okay, what's being cleared, you know, this week, if the clear image comes in, what was cleared, they can track it because they've got a lot of commercial operators there and they, they can check them with this, for example. So, and also what they can then do is also track how the forests are recovering. They can actually then use that to say, well, can we sustainably manage the forest? Is the forest being sustainably managed? And so we can track all sorts of aspects um, in there as well. So it's, it's um, very, um, this is the very um, upper level part of the framework, but there's a very deep framework going, which can go much further in and use the power of the computing facilities that have been provided here um, to produce um, a, a sort of endless a supply of land cover and change and, and contributions to looking at future environments and looking at sustainability. So it's a very exciting um, a way of doing things and the platform gives a, gives a great way to allow people to just look at what's happening. So, so if you want to see the, um, the impact of the cyclone tomorrow, um, just go and have a look through this platform. Thank you, Richard. 